Man, all these songs, all the songs that have been sung, we praise God for them, amen? Praise the name of Jesus. In front of you, you'll find a black Bible. In that black Bible, I want you to turn to page 285, amen? Uh, some of you uh, bring your Bible, some don't. I want you to look at it today, amen? Because I don't want you thinking that the pastor's loading up on you. I don't want you to think that the pastor has got you in his crosshairs because let me tell you something today, amen? God said it, I say it. Amen? God prepares it. God presents it. I just preach it. And this morning, I want to preach to you a message that can change my life and your life in such a way that you can really be serious about serving Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, I want to tell you today that there's so many people that understand this precept that, that we're on a journey. And, and we're on a journey, and we all start our journey, we all end our journey, but the journey in between is kind of where we live our lives. And where we live our lives is most important in which direction that we are going in. Amen? I mean, every one of us here today understands this, and, and we're filled with all these intersections and all these decisions about which do, uh, exit to take here or when to stay on the road and when to go over the hill. Stop and all those things. All journeys have these things. We have journeys that are distant. Some of us will have a distance of 30, 40, 50 years. Others of us will have a distance in our journey of 100 years. There's some that are here that may only have a few more years in your journey. I don't know. But you've got a distance and you've got a destination. Every one of us chooses what destination we go in our journey. Hell doesn't sneak up on anybody, and heaven doesn't open its door just to anybody. It's not by chance. It's not by luck. You just don't fall into it or fall out of it. You make a decision about your destination. And I want you to know that our journeys all depend upon which road we're on. And today I want to look, if God be my helper... That about a road that nobody wants to travel, amen? I mean, come on, you, can, you know this, uh, that there's so many people today that are living on Pleasure Boulevard. It's all about what they can feel. It's all about what they can sense. It's, it's all about heaping upon them things that make them in the flesh feel like they are good, amen? That they're doing great and everything's feeling good. Well, well, there's a drink, there's a drug, there's a destination somewhere. If I could just go to the beach, I'd be all right. If I could just drink another one, I'd be all right. My friend, I want to tell you, that's not the road you need to be on. Pleasure Boulevard leads to a dead end, amen? And there's others that are living on Pride Avenue. You know what I'm talking about. It's Pride Avenue is that I don't need nobody. I don't need a Savior. I don't need God. I don't need Jesus. I'm everything. I'm God in my own self. And there's people that live their life that way all the time on their journey. They are going, and they're going in pride, and pride always puts them at a dead end. Amen? Well, there's others that believe that you can get on Philosophy Parkway. You know that? I mean, they, they, they think that they, just because they know a little bit, they know everything. Now, just because they have a few facts, they know the finite. Just because they are maybe educated in the things of the world, that they know what's best for them in the sphere that God says is mine alone. And so everybody is on this road downhill. I, I want to tell you today, uh, if we look in the Scripture, we are going to look at what puts Solomon... On the road downhill. Now, First Kings chapter number 3 tells us that God says, Solomon, what, what is it I can give to you? What is it that I can do for you? What is it that desire of your heart? And Solomon says in First Kings 3, he says, God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. And God endued Solomon with the wisdom that there's never been before and there never will be after. Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Until he got off on the road down the hill. Amen. I want to take this passage of Scripture. And I, I hope and pray that you've got your passage with you. It's page 285 in your black Bibles today. I hope you already got your fingers there. But read with me as we look at what the Scripture says. The Bible says this. It says, don't fall down a hill. Amen. I mean, come on, guys. Every one of us, when we're walking in our own lives, you know what we do? We trip and fall. 
And so many of us do that. You know, I, I'm pretty sharp on my feet. Why, I think that I've got two right feet, two left feet. I'm pretty good. I'm not going to trip. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to do those things. But every one of us does that. And so what we see here is that Solomon is about to start falling down on the road downhill. Amen? Here we go. Turn your Bibles. Here we go. First Kings chapter number 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites and Ammonites, Edomites, the Zionians and Hittites. Of these nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. But Solomon clave to or unto these loves. And he had 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass. It came to pass. When Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God. And he was, uh, the heart of David was his father. For Solomon went after Asheroth, the goddess of the Zionians, and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, and the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all of his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which he had appeared unto him twice. And he had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Amen? Wherefore, amen? Wherefore, there's always a wherefore. The therefore is he turned his back on God. The wherefore is verse number 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant or my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it unto thy servants. I want to preach to you just a few moments about how you can find the road downhill. Amen? Now, you may think that I'm wise like Solomon. But Solomon wasn't so wise that he couldn't see God right in front of his face. And I want to say to you today that this road, uh, there's four things that I'm going to bring out in this passage of Scripture that every one of us, you, me, we all have our part in these things. And so therefore, today God is saying to you, learn from Solomon. Don't follow the footsteps of Solomon. Stay off the road that leads downhill. But we're going to look at it and I want you to see this road downhill. The road downhill always starts with the disobedience of God's Word. Amen? Look what it says for us here in verse number 2. If you look in verse number 2 of your Scripture, the Bible tells us this. It says in uh, verse number 2, it said, And it came to pass when Jeroboam... Oh, I'm in the wrong verse. Hang on. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Amen? Amen? I don't, know, I don't know if that means there was a bunch of them from different countries or they were all just a little crazy. I'm not sure about that. Amen? I, I, I want you to see that. It says, And King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters. And it starts naming them off. But in verse number 2, it says this, Of the nations concerning that which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them. God said, You shall not go. And yet Solomon who knew God's Word, who understand and understood how Adam had not listened to God, how Lot had not listened to God, how the other patriarchs had in themselves not listened to God. And Solomon knew because he was so wise that all these people before him had made the wrong decision, but yet now Solomon says, I'm going to disobey God's Word. I, I want to tell you today, uh, is that we know. We know. Why do we know? Because God has made it evident to us that He has given us His Word to direct us into passive righteousness. 
God has laid a pathway each for us. In fact, the Bible says that straight is the way and narrow is the path. You see, God said that if you will trust me and seek not your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, I will direct your path. He knew, Solomon knew that God had directed the children of Israel for 40 years all through the Sinai Desert. Solomon knew all this, but yet what Solomon didn't do was obey the word of God. Amen. You know, so many people today, when you talk to them and and they'll say, well, preacher, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I, I know I shouldn't drink this, but I know I shouldn't smoke this, but I know I shouldn't be here, but you see what it is, is that we like Solomon are choosing to disregard God's holy word and walk in our own mind, in our own power, in our own way. And that is the first step that we take when we go down this road downhill. Amen? Solomon it says in verse 2, it says this, he shall, uh, that for surely will turn away your hearts. God said, don't do it, Solomon. Don't do it because they will turn your hearts away from me. Don't do it, Solomon, because I am better to you than 10,000 of 10,000. Don't do it, Solomon, because these other kings and these other kingdoms have nothing to offer you that I don't have 10,000 times more to offer you. Don't do it, Solomon, because I know the beginning from the end. But yet Solomon says in his mind and in his heart, he said, God, I hear what you're saying. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. You see, the Bible tells us very clearly that we are to hearken or listen to God's Word. The Word is nigh unto your heart. Luke chapter number 11 says that you will be blessed if you listen and obey God's Word. James said, he said, don't just be a hearer, but be a doer. But what happens is that we don't listen to God, and the devil leads us astray. Amen? Uh, Jesus was speaking to some Pharisees. There was a great uh, a, a crowd there around him, and he began speaking, and the Pharisees were trying to trip him up. They were trying to tell him about Moses' law, even though Jesus said, I wrote it. Uh, they were trying to tell him about the uh, temple, even though Jesus said, I am the temple. And these Pharisees were chiding, or they were trying to uh, capture Jesus in something, but Jesus said this, he said, listen, I have spoke to you these words. He said in Matthew chapter number 7, he said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came up, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. But he says, Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, the Solomon, that doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain came down, and the floods came up, and the winds blew, and it beat upon their house, and it fell. And the scripture said, Jesus said, the fall of it was so great that there was nothing left over. I want to tell you today that. There's a lot of people that is not listening to what God's saying. And that by not listening to what God's saying, the foundation of their lives is being eroded just like a storm would erode the foundation of a house and just like it would take it and it would unsettle the foundation and every moment it would get closer and closer and closer to falling into the river and it would be swept down all because they did not hearken unto God's word. Amen. The road downhill always starts with obedience. Disobedience to God's word. If you obey God's word, he'll keep you on the right path. If you disobey God's word, you are headed for a dark and dangerous and destructive time. Deuteronomy chapter number 28 verse number 15. It says, but it shall come to pass. Remember, 
in Scripture, it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken or listen unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You know, a lot of times the devil doesn't have to run you down. You run to him. Oftentimes the devil doesn't have to lie to you because you lie to yourself. You see that is when God says something, he says, keep my word and you will prosper. If you don't keep my word, you will be a one who will be on that road downhill and you will find turmoil, tragedy. You will find tears upon tears. And so many lives are led this way because they will not hear God speak to them. You say, well, Pastor, how does God speak to me? The Bible tells us very clearly. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, in verse 16, 17, it says that God, amen, the Word of God is forever settled. Amen. It says that it is given by inspiration. That it is God's word from his throne to your heart. And God wants to speak to you. Amen. Just like he spoke to Abraham in the desert. Just like he spoke to Moses in the backside of the Moabian desert. Just like he spoke to David in the cave. Just like he spoke to Daniel in the lion's den. Just like he spoke to the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. God said, I'm going to speak to you by my word. Because my word is all I've got to do. And the Bible says in John 17, 17, Thy word is truth, O Lord. In Revelation, it says, forever established. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. My word changeth not. One of the last warnings in the New Testament, in Revelation 22, Jesus said, my word is so perfect that you will be cursed if you add to it or take it away. You see, God's word is the only thing that can keep you on the path of righteousness. But if you won't listen, if you won't listen, you're headed to the curses that shall come up on thee. Deuteronomy 28, 20 goes on to say this. The Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexation, and rebuke. In all that thou settest unto you to do, until thou be destroyed, and until you perish quickly, because of the wickedness of your doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Jesus said it this way. Paul wrote it in 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. He said, I'll kill your body. I'll kill you if you won't listen. I believe today that this church would be full of men and women, boys and girls, who if they would have just listened to God, they'd still be here with us today. Amen? I know people that have not listened to God and they went down the road downhill and God has dealt with them. The Bible says here in our passage that God had showed himself to Solomon twice. But how many times has he shown himself to you? More than two. More than 200. More than the stars in the heaven. God shows us the way. God wants us to go the way. God speaks to our heart and says, this is the path of righteousness. But yet we as humanity, we walk away from God. We turn our back on God and we go our own way. That's why the Proverbs says, Proverbs 14, there is a way. This seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Because you've disobeyed the word of God. When you disobey the word of God, it leads you to the second thing. Amen. When you disobey the word, you are destining yourself to be dropped off into a wicked world. Look in verse number four. Look in verse number four with me. Amen. The Bible says this in 1 Kings eleven four. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord God. What happened? Solomon, who started his life with God, was the best there's ever been. But what happened to Solomon? Well, verse 2 tells us that he stopped listening to God. And he started listening to the world. He started listening to the 700 wives. I couldn't imagine, man. 
I can't even listen to the one I've had for 37 years. Amen? Come on, man. You know what I'm talking about. Their mouths are moving, and all you hear is... Wah, 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 wah. Uh, Solomon had 700 of these girls, and they're all, I'm sure, telling him what they want him to do. Amen? You see, the road downhill is one that is going to lead you to a very, very bad place. What did Solomon go after in verse number 4? Look, it's, he had all these wives. Now, I, I can't imagine. Now, these, these are not just your common wives. These are wives fit for a king. So that means that they're educated in their cultures. They're educated in the dynamics of the royal priesthoods. These are all king's daughters. And Solomon not only has 700 of them, but all 700 of them have PhDs in wifeology. And it gets even worse. If you've got 700 wives, how can it get any worse? That's right, brother. You've got 700 mother-in-laws, amen? I couldn't imagine. What was he thinking? Amen? What in the world was Solomon thinking? You know what he was thinking was this, is that if I marry this girl, and it gives several of the countries, if I marry one from Egypt, I'm going to make peace with the Egyptian army. If I marry one over here of, uh, of the Ammonites, uh, those of Ammon, I'm going to make peace with them. I don't have to fight them. If I get me a wife from Lebanon in Phoenicia, I've got it cool. So what Solomon was doing is instead of standing upon the conviction of God's Word, he was making deals with the devil so that he could be comfortable and secure in his palace and he didn't have to yeah, worry about what was going on in the world. He made friends with the devil. So many times we do the exact same thing. 700 wives. How crazy is that? But he did it for the wine. Not, not that Solomon was a drunk. No, it, it doesn't mean that. In the Bible, wine is symbolism of cultural class. You remember in Revelation chapter number uh, uh, 2, or I'm sorry, Revelation chapter number 6, uh, it, it says, don't hurt the wine or the oil. It's talking about the social elite or the social classes. And so Solomon wanted to be a big dog in the dog pound. He wanted to rub elbows with Pharaoh. He wanted to rub elbows with the king of Mesopotamia, Babylon, Persia, Lebanon, Syria. He wanted to be a big shot. And so what he does is that instead of listening to God, he lays it on the line and he says, I'm going to get me all these things of the world. And so he starts, instead of being sold out to God, he's being a socialite in the world. We do the exact same thing. Amen, we do. We want, to, we want everybody to know our name when we come into the room. We want everybody to say, I know him. He's cool. He's somebody. My friend, I want to tell you something today. If I was to die today, my job that I have worked for many years would be posted tomorrow. Nobody past a close circle of friendship will remember me this time next year. Amen. I, I want to tell you, Joe Biden and his Corvette. I know he can't remember where he puts the document, but he's definitely not going to remember where I went. It's not that, but yet we sell out God so that we can be part of a society that hates us anyway. And we do that all the time. You see, we, we do that. It, Solomon said, maybe I can get rich doing this. Now, I, I know you know this, but I'm going to tell you, Solomon liked to spend money. Solomon liked to build roads. He loved to build palaces. He loved to build all these great buildings and all these things that his name. In fact, the Queen of Sheba came all the way from her country. And she laid before Solomon all this gold. And she says, in effect, there's none like you, Solomon. You have built all these wonderful things. And Solomon, instead of saying, God hath done this, he said, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We get the same thing. 
we get an ego. Amen? I mean, if you got to stop telling the truth about me and start fanning my ego, well, you start saying, Pastor, you're the best pastor I've ever seen. You, you're so smart in the Bible, Pastor. you just so... And all of a sudden, my ego starts pumping up, right? Amen? You know what I'm talking about because yours does too. You let the devil fan your little fire and you'll be like Scarlett O'Hara. Oh, I'm just... You know what an ego is, right? Ego, E-G-O. Edging God out so that you can lift yourself up. Hmm? So that's the road downhill. All these things that Solomon did, and what did he get in return? He gets a world of worry. He gets a world of worry. Number one, if you're on the road downhill, you are going to be in a world of worry. Look what it says in Proverbs 5.3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Ooh, so sweet. And her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood. She has as sharp as two-edged sword. Her feet go down into death. Her steps take hold on to hell. You want to have fun with the world? You got to pay the price. Because the world is going to hell. And why would you want to be a part of that? You see, so many times, forbidden fruits lead us to so many jams. And that's where Solomon was. So what happens is that you have a disobedience to his word, and then you dropped into the world, and then all of a sudden, you start worshiping the devil. Pastor, I don't worship the devil. Well, let me tell you this. There's only two sides to a coin. Jesus said it this way. He said you will either cleave to one and loose the other. You will serve one master or the other. There is no middle ground. God, the Bible says, is a jealous God. God's not going to allow you to go uh, uh, out and be adulterous to the world and then all of a sudden cozy up to Him when you need something. God says, I'm jealous. Choose. It's on you. But look what he says. Solomon says this. It, it's, the Bible says in uh, verses 5 and 6. It says, For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zadions, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord. I, I don't know if you know who they are, but I'm going to briefly tell you. I can't tell you everything about them because there's younger ears in the room. But we're going to talk about how Solomon, the wisest man, the one that God had chose to build the temple, the one that God wanted to use to lead Israel to a, a worship with him. Solomon had disobeyed God. He had dropped into the world. And now he is devil worshiping. Look what it says, Asheroth. Who is she? Asheroth is one, is, is the female god of battle and fertility. It, she is a pagan god that all the pagans in the world, or in Solomon's world, knew exactly who she was. Solomon, God had spoke to him and, and shown himself to him two times. He saw God. Solomon looks at God, and the Bible says that the heavens and the earth declare the glory of the Lord. The Bible says he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. The Bible says in, first Colos or in Colossians, it says that he made all things. Solomon knew that God. He decides to worship the wicked one. Go. It says Milcon, the abomination of the Ammonites. If you look over in verse 33 of your Bible, 1133, you'll see that his name is changed to Molech. Molech is one that they used to sacrifice their children upon a burning altar. They would throw their children into the fire. And there are people today that are doing the exact same thing because they have dropped down into the world and now they are worshiping devils pretty hard preaching pastor man it's true it's true i know for a fact that there's families that know who god is but yet they've turned their back on god so that they can chase a ball 
You don't see them on Sundays during whatever season, soccer season, baseball season, basketball season, football season, tiddlywink season, whatever season. They're gone into the world, and they're playing a game, and the game always comes up with they're not going to win. They are worshiping the God of this world. There's people right now chasing a time clock, a time sheet. They are worshiping their careers. They will work overtime, six days to seven days a week. They will give their all into their job, but they don't have anything left for God because they're so tired from keeping their nose on the grindstone. They're worshiping the God of the world. Now, there's people that worship idols. Believe it or not, so much. I, I know none of you do because you're not rich like me and you don't really care like me, but just a few months ago, Ticketmaster puts out the big sign that Taylor Swift is going to start a new tour. They go to this certain website, the website gets them the tickets, they're just ecstatic, they're jumping up and down. I've got Taylor Swift tickets, Woohoo! Then it crashes and nobody has a ticket. You know that there was over 50 documented suicides because they didn't have Taylor Swift tickets? I wouldn't walk across the street to see Taylor Swift sing. I might walk across the street to tell her she needs Jesus. But I'm not going to go see her. Amen? I want to ask you a question. Here's the dividing line. The Bible says in Galatians 6, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever you, a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life eternal. Joshua said it this way. Joshua said in Joshua 24, uh, verse number 15, he says, and I'll read the whole thing for you, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which are of your father served and that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I'm saying that if you disobey God's word, you are going to drop into a world that is going to kill you. And before it kills you, you are going to be a devil worshiper. Because you are worshiping the things of the world and not the one in heaven. Jesus said it this way. He writes in the Exodus, You shall have no other gods before me. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm just going to tell you the truth about me. There's been times in my life that I've got ahead of God, and I've got all of a sudden I've realized God has shook me and said, What in the world are you worshiping? You're not worshiping me. You're worshiping your, your mentor. You're worshiping your wallet. Or you're worshiping the things of this world. You're worshiping cars or houses. You're worshiping all these things. You're not worshiping me. You're worshiping the things of the devil. John chapter number 8, verse number 44 says this. Your father, the devil who you will listen to and his will you will do man i want to tell you it's real in my life and i can only imagine somebody that that doesn't come to church or somebody that doesn't study their bible or somebody that doesn't take part in a local fellowship how that they can get so hung out into the world that they start worshiping these devils disobedience Drops you into the world. It devolves into devil worship. But I got to tell you, the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say, 
it's going to destroy you. And you're going to waste your life. Look what he says. The Bible says in verses 9 and 10, And the Lord was angry with Solomon. Why? Because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and commanded him concerning these things that he should not go after other gods. But he, Solomon, kept not that which the Lord had commanded him. Let me tell you something. God's a God of love. John chapter number 4 says, God is love. God loves you so much that He'll punish you. The Bible says that if you are without chastisement, you are a bastard and not a son. If you can skate and do what you do, knowing that it's against God's Word and that it's worldly and that you're worshiping that whatever that is, if you can do all those things, I want to tell you the truth. God is going to judge. He will judge. And He will execute judgment. The Bible says, Paul writes, he says this, he says that if you will discipline your child, how much more so should God not discipline you for not listening and being led by your Heavenly Father? God is a God of mercy. But when necessary, God is the God of judgment. I have someone in my life that I've known for many, many, many years. And he walked away from the Lord many years ago. Still, he said, he's okay. That God is just going to turn a blind eye and just let it go. Well, he was a preacher. He pastored a church. He had a wife and two children. And now when you see him on Facebook or whenever you hear about him, oh, he's doing so good in his business. He's doing so good in the community. He's doing so good with uh, his wife and all these things. And everything's just going good for him. Do you hear the thunder coming? God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Ezekiel chapter number 6, verse number 13 says it this way. He says, Then you will know that I am the Lord when the slain are among their idols around their altars. When the house burns down, you will know that God is God. When the life goes off track, you're going to know that God is God. Isaiah 42 says it this way, They will be turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in idols, who say to the molten images, You are our gods. I'll close this up. Miss Connie, get a song, just, just something. Are you on the road downhill? Are you on that road? You may only be a step or two on it, but you're on the road downhill. Maybe you've been walking for years on this road, but God has got you today. He's let you hear this message because He loves you so much that He wants to tell you the truth. Have you been disobedient to God's Word? Do you know what God says, but you don't do it? Are you dropped off in the world and you've kind of, like Lot... Instead of fleeing the world, you find a place to live in the world till it all goes to hell. Are you someone that has devolved? You know that God in heaven reigns on high, but you, you worship yourself. You worship what you can touch, what you can taste, what you can feel. It's going to end in destruction. Pastor, this is a hard message. Why do you preach so hard messages? You know why? Because God loves you. If there was a bridge out, and you're going 100 miles an hour, and you don't warn someone that the bridge is out and they go off the bridge, if your house is on fire, 
And I drive by your house, and I see the smoke, I see the flames, but I think, well, it'd be awful upsetting to wake them up at this late hour at night. If I was a physician, a doctor who had a cure for what is your disease, what you're seeing, and I didn't tell you about the cure and allowed the cancer to continue to eat you, what kind of love is that? God wants you to get off the road that leads downhill. Next Sunday morning, we are going to preach on the road up the mountain. This is going to be where you kind of pivot your life one way or the other. It starts today. I want you to rise to your feet just for a second. I've preached as hard and as well as I know how to preach. I've said nothing new because it's all written of old. The only factor that now lays in the balance is you. God has brought His Word. He's laid it before you. He's given you a choice. What will you choose? We're going to sing a verse of a song here in just a second. And on the first verse of that song, I want you to turn around, do a U-turn, detour off the road down the hill, and come to this altar. There will be men, women that will pray with you, and I want you to pick back up where God wants you to be, which is on the righteous path. But you've got to come. Solomon said... I'm not going to come, God. God said, come. I'm not going to come, God. God said, come. God's telling you to come. But it's up to you to choose. Would you bow your head with us, please? Father, we love you. We thank you. Father, we thank you for your word. God, I ask you, Father, today that you have touched someone's heart. Father, that you have stirred within them a need to come back to you, to draw closer to you, to know you. Father, I ask you, Lord God, that you give them the boldness to take a step of faith and come and pray before you. Do that which I cannot do. Change a heart today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.